Hi everyone and welcome back to our YouTube channel. We are as always your hosts Arne and Carlos and in November we bring you a super fun knit along. We're doing a stocking and our goal is to get all of you to knit a stocking before December 1st. So you can hang it up and hopefully get lots of nice gifts. And this knit along is completely free. So every day we are going to be posting six rounds here. On our channel, uh, actually we'll be showing you, revealing the six rounds, and then we'll be posting the free chart over at our blog at arnecarlos.com slash blog. And all you need to do is head over there when this episode finishes, which is when we post the new free pattern of the day. And this knit along is free all the way until December 1st, and on December 1st it does become a paid pattern. And we're talking about 2024, Arne. If you're watching this in 2026, <laughs> it's not free anymore. No, but no. But you can also uh, wait a little bit before you see this and then you can download the pattern and then you can watch this while you knit it. Yeah, but I like the reveal to be a surprise, yeah, you know what I mean? And then we can tell you something. And we do the little drum roll and then we show off whatever it is we're, we're showing off and it's kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. we can do both. We could do both, yeah. Um, <laughs> with us uh, during this uh, knit along, we've got our four little friends, Bob, Danny, Susie and Fran. And they are behind us, as you can see, out the window. They never move. They never move because we treat them so well. <laughs> and this is a typical traditional Norwegian view. Um, and it's beautiful, as you all know. I mean, we have a beautiful view from our windows here in, we do. in this house. Yeah. We've got a lake, we've got pine trees, uh, we've got fir trees as well. We've got mountains and beautiful sunny skies usually yeah. in November. In November. So, and I've started to tell the story about this one yesterday. Oh yeah, the door, yes. The door. And um, what did they say? Oh yeah, it was my grandmother's niece. Yeah, you were talking about the house where it was hanging on the wall. Her cottage up mm. in the mountains. And I remember like when I was younger, we went to our out farm for Easter and winter holidays. And I must have been in that cottage while her granddaughter was there. And mm. I must have commented that I like that door. You must have. It was, uh, was it last year or the day? Oh, no, no. Huh? It was uh, during the COVID pandemic. I got very sick yeah, and, and I ended up at the lung hospital. Yeah. And uh, at the lung hospital, there was a nurse. Yeah, you got the message. Yes. From there, her. Right, yeah. Ah. There was a nurse working at the lung hospital and you weren't allowed there. No, no. Because it was in, it was in 2021 in January. So people have not been that fully vaccinated in Norway yet. So you weren't allowed at the hospital. I had to be there all on my own and I couldn't have any visitors. And she mentioned to me that you, um, that you were dreaming about, well, that you had this door that you had, <laughs> that you had loved uh, for years and years and that it had become available. Yeah, and I kind of, I forgot everything about that door. And, and she's my uh, second cousin. Yeah, so... And then you came back and told me about the door. And I was, the yeah. door? Oh, that door. Yeah. And like, that's a beautiful door. And I said, I'm going to get, I want to have it. If she want to give it away, yeah. I'll take it. So, so, she, so you called her up. So I called her up and then she said I could just come and pick it up. And then one day we went over to where I'm from in Ghost Star and I... I sent her a message and said, we're coming now, can I come and pick up the door? And then she said she had to go away, but she would have put it in the garage so I mm. can just go in there and take the door. So that's how it happened. Now, the, it wasn't easy uh, getting that door here, but uh, we'll leave that at a, as a cliffhanger <laughs> so that we have another story to tell you. Otherwise, we may run, run out of things to talk about. Oh, you, you think know? that will happen? Um, I don't know. I so mean, more, there's so much things going on. There's here. a lot going on. You're right. But anyway, we'll leave that as, as a cliffhanger and we'll tell you tomorrow um, <laughs> all the difficulties of getting the bloody door um, because if I remember correctly, I may actually add this. So I was in the lung hospital in 2021, but it wasn't until 2022 that you went to pick oh, up the door. The year so it took a year. It took a year. Yeah. So, I mean, Arne has been uh, dreaming about this door for quite some time, and it actually took quite some time to get it here. But now it's here. It's and, here. Uh, and it's yeah. beautiful. I and think it's beautiful. We love it. And we put it here. Uh, for all of you to enjoy. I think we have used it. Um, we used it for the Christmas balls a few years. Was it last year or the year before? Maybe not last year, but we have photographed uh, with because this door. Because we put the tree in front of this picture mm. or painting and we took, so took the pictures of the balls. Yeah. Maybe two years ago. Mm. 
I'm sure mm. that uh, so everybody knows how much we love painting everything in color. We love color so much. And I'm sure that there's uh, questions about the background today. Well, not today only, but I'm sure that people have been asking a lot about that. Um, do you remember the name of the color? It's called Colk Green. Colk Green by Farrow and Ball is the green. And I think it's because uh, they found that color in Colk Abbey, maybe? Yeah. Because it's Colk Green. Probably Colk from green. Colk, Colk Abbey, Abbey yeah. one of the National Trust properties in England, which is one of my favorites, maybe one of yours too. I'm not yeah, sure. but it I is. I really love it. The thing, the funny thing about, well, it's not funny, but the thing about Colk Abbey is that, um, I mean, we go to England every year. Um, except for the pandemic years and we do we do garden tours we travel around and both on our own and, and nowadays we do it with groups as mm -hmm. well and we always go to our favorite places you know we've got Rousham we've got a Sissinghurst Hidcote uh, there's so many amazing places Great Dixter mm -hmm. um, and Colk Abbey is one of the favorite places that we have that we've only been to once one time only and but it was a special occasion yeah. remember what the occasion it was it was my 29 year old birthday well 29 Again. and then add a few more his 50th <laughs> birthday he wanted to spend his 50th birthday uh, in Colk Abbey yeah, and we did which we did and it it's a amazing place if you ever seen Colk Abbey just google it or go there. Yeah, it's beautiful. I loved it because it was uh, so. At the end of the, you know, before it became a, a national trust property, uh, there was only one man living there in one room. But it's a huge stately home. It's like Downton Abbey, huge stately home, and which, by the way, is Highclere Castle. Mm -hmm. Downton Abbey is called Highclere Castle. I'm sure people will comment me if I don't mention that. <laughs> anyway, so Kalkabi is pretty much a huge uh, stately home, and by the end of the 80s or mid-80s or something, uh, the last owner uh, was living all alone in a room, or yeah, one and, and a half room, and, and he, he had someone from the village bring him food. A lady from the village came and fed him, yeah. and he had he used the kitchen and the hall, and was it the one bedroom? Yeah. Or not much, actually. And so when the property became part of the National Trust, there were rooms there that hadn't been open for 100 years. They had been closed down. I mean, both the shutters and the rooms. So when they opened them, they, they found these intact rooms that were quite mm. beautiful. And so the National Trust decided to keep uh, Colk Abbey as they found it, kind of like a sleeping beauty. Yeah, it's like they took the wallpaper off and they fixed the walls and then they put the wallpaper well, back so it looked right like it was before. So they did, even the cracks in this. They, they kept saw, the cracks, yeah, yes. We saw that on TV with Ruth Watson from the, mm. what's that called again? Country House Rescue. Yeah. She went there and they talked about that, that they actually, they put in some metal thing to, to reinforce, reinforce the, the, the ceiling in one room just to keep the crack. Yeah. So I think every, every people who go there, they feel like they're the first one. Exactly. It's yeah. like you re you discover something. But if it's they really wouldn't nice. if they wouldn't have done that, the building would have collapsed eventually. Mm. Uh, so what they've done is really just uh, they've conserved it. They haven't renovated. You know, no, there's there's a there's a big of... difference between conserving and renovating. I think, yeah. and they've just kept it as it looks like it's. Can you imagine living in a house with so many rooms and you don't even go into the room? I know that could be fun. Yeah, I, what I remember, what, what I remember was spectacular. Was they had a, um, you know, all of these stately homes. They have a, a kind of like a very important bed mm -hmm. with hangings, and it's usually when the king comes to visit, uh, they have to yeah, spend in, a lot of Colk money, Abbey. right? Yeah, and the one in Colk Abbey hadn't. It was from the 17th century. The bed hangings, and they had been preserved. Uh, they had been kept in a box for 200 or 300 years, mm -hmm. so they were intact, and the color hadn't faded. And the colors were so bright. So that, very bright. That, it's interesting to see because when you go into old places, mm -hmm. the colors are more faded. But yeah, if you saw it new, it was colorful very gaudy the colors yeah. were very strong and very gaudy uh, and, and nowadays it's it's uh, exhibited in a dark room with, with yeah. which is lit in a way so that the um, that the light doesn't consume the fabric uh, but I have to say personally I love faded the faded look more it's, it's very nice with the faded look. I love it yeah it's also nice to see mm. how things were yeah. were were exactly were. Yeah. Were. But, you know my, my favorite colors <laughs> I oh, like my English is I'm losing my English again no, you're were. Good. How were. they were. How they were, yeah. Were. But, but yeah, I love the faded colors. My favorite colors are like these soft pinks and soft blues and soft greens and mm -hmm. off-whites and creams and 
these kind of colors I like a lot. And then I like adding a little pop of dark blue or yeah. something for, for a little um, action. Um, and you're the same, yeah. really. Yeah. I like, like these popping colors every yeah. now and then. It's anyway, nice. we've we've digressed, and we're you not. You see, you just talk about the color, and we can talk for hours. Right. Yeah, and we're not talking about Christmassy things because it's not technically December yet. Um, it's earlier. It's November, but actually for us, it's even earlier because this is pre-recorded. Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, we don't really have to talk about Christmassy things, even though we're doing a Christmas project. Uh, but we're all only doing this so that you guys can get it all done before Christmas. That's that's yes. that's the thing. That's the idea. But I think that we need a little <laughs> drum roll, and I can't, I can't remember now who was the one uh, revealing yesterday. I don't know, but I can do the drum roll. Does it matter? Oh, uh, no. But then we'll remember you did the drum roll and I did the revealing. And then tomorrow... You do the revealing today and I do the drum roll. Okay. I have no clue what we did. Yeah. So I'm starting... I, I'm going to get my drum. Do oh, I have yeah. Drum? And I remember, I remember yesterday... I remember yesterday commenting that we had cut uh, all, all, all of the colors except for the white. Mm -hmm. And so maybe people thought that we may be knitting with a lot of white today. Maybe only white. But no. No. There is a reason why a we reason. cut the color. Yeah. So we'll talk about that as well. But uh, without further ado, may I have a drum roll, please, my dear? Have a drum roll. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. And this is what we are doing today. These are the six rows. There's a little bit of white, obviously, and we've come on to the green as well. And now you see why we cut the, the yarn because it's uh, quite a long distance from the green. This green to that green, and yeah. then you need to carry the green with you when you're going knitting up, and that's kind of not necessary. No. Because then you will have three colors and they're all mixed up. Yeah. It's easier to cut it and just weave in the ends. Right, because otherwise you're carrying colors that way and, and that way. And that you don't way. we don't want to do that. We we just Some, want to do sometimes that. Sometimes you do it if you only like for a mitten, if you only on the rib sometimes, mm. if it's five rows, like in, on our mittens, yeah. then, uh, then we can carry the yarn we're not knitting with up one time. Mm. But this is too much. So speaking of carrying threads uh, or, or yarns, today is the first time yeah. that you will have to carry because we've got five whites. No, five greens. Sorry, five greens and one white. Uh, and when you do five greens, you do need to carry. Uh, carry on the third or the fourth um, and I think that it's very important to think about also that if you have to carry the row after make sure that the place where you twist the floats and carry them make sure that they're staggered so you want you don't want a straight line of, of, of the same place you carry mm. because then the colors will shine through what you want is a staggered like yeah. that you don't have to think about that on this one no because there's only one row where, exactly or one round where you actually carry the float but on a general you have to basis. stagger so yeah this is uh, it's growing it's growing yeah and as you can see six rows a day is really achievable and uh, <laughs> i'm sure that it's going very well and if it's not going very well don't worry i mean it's very long until Christmas this year anyway. Right. Um, and if you are struggling, do put your uh, concerns um, or your comments in the, um, in the uh, comments field. We've got a lot of wonderful knitters here. They're very advanced and they're very skillful and they are happy to help you guys. And remember, what we really want is the community spirit yeah. here. We love seeing the comments. We love seeing people interacting. And uh, it's not that we have the possibility to go in here every day because we are on a very, very busy schedule. But we do try as much as possible to come in as well and say hello. So, uh, hello. <laughs> so just make sure to continue interacting. Hello in writing. Also. Right. Yeah. Make sure to continue interacting and make sure to continue uh, being so kind to, what to is each this other. When the, well, we did this for, for Norwegian TV once. We did the Christmas uh, night before Christmas TV show. And that oh, was yeah. called Live on Tape. Live on Tape, yes. So we, we recorded it a few days before the night before Christmas. Mm. And then it was kind of live yeah. on the well, night before. So t there's a lot of terms in t television. We've done a lot of television. so. Pretty much what live on tape means is that it's recorded with a live studio audience, but it's not direct. It's not, it's not broadcasted directly at the same time as it's recorded. It's mm. pre-recorded 
but with a with a live audience, so live on tape. Yeah. Yeah. Usually for TV, uh, it's quite hard to, uh, you know, do direct. We did it that also. We did the same TV program mm. two times. We did the year after direct, yeah. And that was direct. Live. So live. live. And then every, a lot of things can go wrong. But a lot of things can go wrong. It didn't go wrong. Well, no, because it was all rehearsed. So yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember. remember. We had a rehearsal. We had to get there. So the broadcast time was at 7 o'clock in the evening. But we had to be, get there at nine in the morning, mm. and then we had uh, hair and makeup, Is that what and we... run throughs, and then we had to do the whole thing, uh, and they recorded it. So we had. That was, we... that was when we had the knitted doll book. Yeah. And we were sitting down, and one of your buttons popped. We are not just talking about before that. the camera was on, <laughs> and just before the camera came to film us. I had the pin or something, so we just quickly, we just pinned your shirt. Nobody noticed, so you don't have to talk about that, that a button in my shirt popped. So that's not very kind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, we had it's to... all the muscles, you start knitting and yeah, you know right. your muscles yeah, are just... The knitting muscles. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we had to record it once uh, before it went live, just in case something went wrong and then they could have just put it through. Anyway, we're digressing now. Yes, We've got we a great competition, so uh, let's go for that. So we've got a really cool competition running this year uh, where we will randomly select a lucky winner who will win uh, our latest uh, e-booklet that we have done for Rowan uh, and enough of the Rowan Norwegian wool yarn to knit one of the sweaters from this uh, e-booklet in any size they want. Yeah, and the uh, inspiration for this collection is Svalbard. So we have the husky sweater, we have the dog sledge, we have cables and we have polar bears. And the only thing you have to do is to answer this question. How many books have we published? Yep, that's the question uh, for this year. And uh, we want you to put the answer in the comments down below. It's a number we're looking for. And we're going to give you a little hint. Uh, Wikipedia is not um, a reliable source. Uh, so you may want to look elsewhere if you want to get the correct answer. Yeah. And uh, you can put the answer down preferably once uh, per day. Uh, during this knit along and that will increase uh, your chances but please do not put the answer more than once per day because then you will be ghosted by YouTube <laughs> and you do not want that to happen <laughs> so once a day is pretty much enough yeah. and uh, we will announce the lucky winner um, in December so this will be um, a fine Christmas well one person will get a really fine Christmas prezi from Arne and me in the post as well yes. So remember to like and subscribe and if you're a subscriber put on that notification bell because then you won't miss the episode. Yep and make sure to interact with our content as that really helps us here on YouTube. And uh, last but not least uh, for additional content uh, make sure to look at the uh, offer that we have for members. Uh, becoming a member means that you will get 15-minute uh, catch-ups with us every week. Uh, we do live streams where we offer our knitting help and expertise. We've got shenanigans in the kitchen and shenanigans, well, actually, <laughs> shenanigans pretty much wherever we yeah, go. We <laughs> um, and then there's fun uh, things like badges and emojis and other kind of content like that. So um, if you want to become a member or if you want to consider it, all you need to do is visit our channel at Arna Carlos, go to the subscribe button, and next to the subscribe button, you've got a join button. Join uh, by clicking and then selecting your tier and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you uh, for that additional content as well and if not it's perfectly okay. We look forward to seeing you here every day uh, for our knit along and then for our usual episodes on Sundays. Yes. Yep. So. so thank you for watching and we will catch up with you very very soon again. Bye! Bye.